What is up guys, welcome back to another Destiny 2 build session. Today we're going to be covering an endgame build for the Titan class utilizing the Crown Splitter Sword and how you can easily achieve 100 to 200k plus sword damage against any and all enemies in game. The aim of this setup is to allow users to rush through high end enemies via one single hit from the heavy sword attack or build up the damage via small hits and then do a large hit as a finisher for maximum damage. As Clown Splitter Heavy Attack interacts with Energy Accelerant and the sword is one of the best heavy swords to use for its damage alone, it makes the most sense to create a build around it and spread its effects for all content, no matter the situation. A lot of reviewing and testing was done for this build to see how well it would last in the most difficult content available, and surprisingly, as long as you don't play reckless and you swap out certain mods or weapons out to accommodate certain challenges, the build has quite a good survival rate even while underleveled. Another thing to note is that I'm using Top Tree Void for bubble protection and damage, and using a mix of Charged with Light, Warm Mind Cells, and Elemental Wells for maximum offense, defense, and practicality. Simply put it, the build will give you an idea into how to build into the sword first, and then how you can build into the rest of it for its use in endgame. Whether what I show is viable information or not is down to you. But if you wish to get rid of the most hardest champions, ultras, or bosses in a single hit or few, then this build will provide that. All you gotta do is sit back and take notes. Before we head in, if you enjoyed the video, then please do leave a like and a sub as it really does help me out. Starting with the subclass, we will be using Curler the Protector for Wall of Dawn and then the Overshield options it provides for more extra protection while on the move. With Wall of Dawn present, I can use this super to further enhance mine and my team's damage by an extra 35% for the duration it lasts. This when used properly can allow you to single handedly take out a unstoppable champion within one hit if you have the Throne Cleaver Sword active, but only if they are stunned. Unstunned, you can be looking at taking around 75% of the health if you are lucky to get a hit in first. This however, poses too much of a risk against such an enemy as they are a death threat if you are within their range from the melee. Against overloads or barrier champions, you will be fine and you can easily take them out, but unstoppable requires a bit more attack before proceeding. The good thing about Wall of Dawn though is that we can pair this up with Helm% 14 for both a blinding effect for those who enter our bubble and an overshield that we can carry around after exiting our bubble. Although this won't change much against a unstoppable for example, the free overshield provided will allow you to tank its hits more better and thus finish what you started. We then also have the extra overshield options that will help us out while in a pinch. The Fencer Strike provides an overshield for you and your team and grants you melee energy while the shield is still up. Radiant Force will provide health for you and your team upon melee kills and Turn the Tide enhances Defensor Strike by making it last longer, increase melee damage and increase reload speed as well. When put together, you can consistently have an overshield up to provide extra defense while in close quarters. This is the reason why I chose the subclass in the first place as your sword is the strongest tool in your arsenal, and for you to get the most out of it, you will need to close the gap quickly and safely while doing so. All of this against a single champion is a prime example as to how strong the subclass, when combined with sword, can truly be if you have the offensive part covered. Now of course, against most bosses, depending on difficulty, it won't always be an instant one shot because of phases involved, but you can do enough damage to skip certain phases without trying to break down the health. All we need to keep in mind though is to only attack when the time is right, and if we have enough protection on hand to do so, doing this is all you'll really need to focus on. For weapons, I've kept in mind what will be the best to be used for end game and what can be changed depending on the environments we are in. Nothing too specific is required, but only the main basics would do. My primary is the Survivor's Epitaph with Ricochet Rounds, Quick Draw and Osmosis, and although the weapon looks very average at best, I plan to use the weapon to produce Elemental Wells that will restock my abilities as I go. With the Elemental Armors mod, after a number of kills I can produce an Elemental Well that upon picking up will grant me energy to the recharging area needed. This can only be achieved via Void Weapons and Subclass and Vault, which I have the two covered. Osmosis on the Hand Cannon allows me to change it from a Kinetic to an Energy, and this case here will turn the weapon void and thus allow me to use the mod freely. Whilst we don't have a mod or perk available to grant us more ability energy as we go, this alternative is a great filler for the time being and pairs well with the weapon to be used in endgame, 
as you can prepare yourself with the right elements if match game is active. Sadly, having quick draw as a third perk isn't really end game worthy as you don't need to worry about reaction timing. Getting one with Feeding Frenzy or Ambitious Assassin is a lot more effective in the long run. For secondary, I'm using the Telesto to help produce more myself and elemental wells as I go, but this can be changed to a Truth Teller instead if you want to make use of the Unstoppable Grenade Launcher perk and the Bridge and Clear mod as well. At first, I was hesitant in using this since using this for endgame isn't really all that viable, as you need to keep your distance more and only use it when enemies charge at you, or if you need to take out the bigger enemies first. However, combining this with the Warmind Decree mod for that extra AoE damage from Warmind cells showed me it can have a place if used correctly. Now, using the weapon in Master Content will be tough as you need to have a weapon that can counter the following champions available, and the damage alone won't be enough. I can, however, add in the Hammer of the Warmind mod in whatever armor slot and cover both Overload and Unstoppable in one blast. At the same time, I can also produce elemental wells to help regen my abilities considering how strong the weapon is. On my setup, I don't currently have that since most of my mods needed are covered by my teammates so I can freely use something else, but if I decide to play in solo lost sectors and need a way to counter the champions, then I can use the weapon to produce a cell and hopefully cause as much damage within my venicity as possible. Like I said, this can be changed depending on content and requirements needed. For Heavy, I've chosen to use the Crown Splitter Sword with Tyler's Blade and Surrounded. Although this weapon role I have isn't the god lore that many people would agree on, it's still a powerhouse to use against champions or most ultra enemies as the heavy attack combined with the Energy Excellent mod can one-shot enemies in a flash without needing to use a champion mod. This for endgame activities like Nightfall is where the weapon can shine the most as a simple heavy attack is all you need to one-shot and move on from one tough enemy to another. On top of that, a successful heavy attack can produce a warm cell on an instant, which for us is a bonus as I have applied the power of Rasputin mod for an extra 10% weapon buff that also stacks with bubble. These buffs here can provide you with the power to easily one-shot enemies or take out a large chunk of health out of said enemy with ease so it all generally works out. For the stats, our main focus is going to be Discipline and Intellect as these are the two main areas that will be used the most, with Recovery and Resilience always being covered as passive effects. As we don't have many ability focused mods this time round, we will have to rely on alternative mods to fill in the gap and cover us where our stats can only do so much. Discipline will be left at 60 as the cooldown provided will be suffice, although this can be increased higher if you plan to use your grenades more often. Except in the mods, we have Absolution, Distribution and Elemental Armaments, with Armaments being the key mod to support this area's stats. Remember, as we are using weapons like Telesto and Osmosis Park, we can create wells as we please and this alone should be enough to provide the energy you'll need to use your grenades as much as possible. If needed, you can swap out your secondary for the Truth Teller with Demolitionist to get more energy if you need even more support. Our intellect will be kept at 60 as well, and unlike discipline, its only support will come from orbs or power you collect and the ashes to ashes mod that you can get from the artifact with cheap. As bubble is a key for achieving high damage and defense against bosses, it will be important to make you have this area easily accessible when the time comes. Having ashes to ashes tied into grenades allows us to practically add more support to discipline as it will be benefiting both areas more. Since I have weapons that produce orbs of power, I don't need to worry so much about getting it as high as possible. However, we can add in weapons with fresh to our arsenal if we plan to use it more often in much more longer activities such as raids. From here on out, the rest of the mods used are the general support items that will enhance the gameplay as mentioned. The most important mods are Luke and Blade that provides a damage boost for a few seconds and increase the recharge rate of our sword's heavy attack and then Energy Accelerant that will pretty much increase our heavy sword attack by more than it should be. These two in hand will give you the boost to constantly do heavy attacks after heavy attacks with little to no breaks involved. Now as we have covered the main topics or what makes the setup, here are the mods we have and how they will overall affect the build. For Head we have Discipline, Fusion Rifle Ammo Finder, Ashes to Assist and Warmind Decree mod. Arm we have Minor Resilience, Overload Hand Cannon, Momentum Transfer and Luke and Blade mod. Chest we have Discipline, Concursive Damage Times 2 and Power of Espution mod. Leg we have Minor Intellect, 
Absolution, Sword Scavenger, and Element Armors mod. Mark, we have Mind Discipline, Distribution, Energy X Element, and Taking Charge mod. For a simple but easy to use build, the following setup will allow you to easily take on any normal, legend, and master tier content with the right approach provided. All damage for you to maximize on will be coming from your sword, and how you plan to use it will depend on the scenario, enemy type, environments, and buffs available. If we take the Fallen Saber Nightfall, this Nightfall is perfect for us to fully use our sword in a close court environment with plenty of cover available. At Legend or Master, our main threats will be the enemies who overwhelm us in a small room, and then the champions that come by to further support them. With our setter, we can easily break down the encounter's run through all the boss's phases in a short amount of time. Our grenades, which are suppression types, will stun or kill enemies caught within its venicity, which will yield us some super energy via the Ashes Assets mod. Our Telesto, upon being interacted by enemies, will detonate and has a chance to produce a Warmind Cell via Warmind Decree, which will then further buff us via Power of Rasputin effect for 10%. In this case, if we have this near a mini boss or boss in general, we can use this effect to amplify our sword damage on top of our bubble and Lucan blade. In a small crowded area, 9 times out of 10, a teammate will try to pop it before you get the chance to fully use it, so destroying them straight away is the best course of action to save you some grief. Once we do hit the boss, in our case the Fallen Saber, placing a bubble near the back area will help in terms of dipping in and out for your team and having it out the way. The bubble in Master Content will help you greatly since the boss's charge attack can one shot if you're on half health, and the moment you get it down to its final phase can allow you to bait him into the bubble and tank his health with the sword. Now, when time comes to applying damage, you'll have the bubble, which is a 35% buff. Lucan Blade for a 35% buff for 5 seconds, and Power of Rasputin for 10% buff, which will roughly come to around 200 to 250k via the heavy attack. Great damage, and the gear provider can achieve that easily for all, even if you don't have everything active. The thing is, though, you won't always be achieving these numbers, as all encounters in the game are different. Fallen Saber was used as an example because it's short and fits the theme of the build very well. But on other nightfalls that are longer and have more harder hitting enemies, you won't get the luck to get up close and do the damage all the time. Now we can change up a gear like previously mentioned and add in the World of Tenacity or Protective Light mod while taking out the Power of Asputa mod will give you ample damage reduction when needed. Now damage is still going to be great even without all the buffs active as you can still pull in high numbers ranging from 50 to 100k and using this in legend or master content where the enemies are tough but not too challenging will give you an equal opportunity to farm certain bosses for gear without the weight of dwindling the health down. Its only downside is that it can't go any higher than that as anything GM wise requires more thought and practice which for this build is too reckless in design. At the end of the day, the build is packing a lot of heat and is not afraid to use it on those who challenge it. If you wish to brute force your way into most endgame content while waiting for a more passive build to come by, surely this build is what you're looking for. So if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you did that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you on the next one.